All right, what I've done so far today, um, to progress on the build, uh, I've put some some uh, M12 bolts to either side of each of the carriages just to use to lock them down. Um, once I've got this in place, the whole purpose obviously, um, the whole purpose of this obviously is to be able to do repetitive moulding. Um, so the carriage won't need to be moved around um, all that much. So I figured, you know, once it's set up in place, say, say about there for example, we can then lock lock each of these four bolts down. They really only have to be finger tight and um, they kind of serve a dual purpose in a way. Firstly they do uh, lock the carriages down in position so that the nozzle really doesn't move and is only going up and down. Um, but they also serve to take a little bit of the strain off of um, these splinters. Uh, take a bit of the strain off of these um, uh, rods here, um, so that that locks in quite nicely there. Um, don't know about the stability of the table legs. I might have to brace those at some point because the other thing that I've done, and I don't, it should show up there on the camera, um, is I have cut a large section of the table away. Out of the way uh, in here, so. Um, what I'm going to be using is more of this 20mm plate. Uh, I've got two lens of this that I'm going to be using uh, as vice jaws, I suppose, um, that are going to come in from either side. Uh, I'll have a, an, a, a pneumatic ram on one side and on the other side probably some threaded rod so it works much like a vice. Um, uh, now, in a traditional uh, plastic injection moulding machine, um, there's the repetitive process. The way it works is, uh, once the mould is cast and the and uh, the piece is set inside the mould, uh, the machine opens the mould up, um, and you have a couple of uh, like ejector pins that will eject the casting, and it drops down below. Now, at this stage. Um, even though I am planning on having each half of the mould um, screwed into the, the, the vice or the clamp plate, so as, as I open them up it opens the mould, um, I'm not putting ejector pins in at this stage. However, um, should I uh, add those in in the future, um, I want to have the ability for that part to then drop down. Uh, underneath the table into a collection bin. Um, so that's part of the reason for doing that. The second reason why I, I cut this out is uh, I've been thinking about how I'm going to mechanise the sliding of these um, clamping plates. Uh, what I've, I'm trying to kind of cut costs and use bits and pieces that I've got already. I do happen to have a box of these. They're like a um, like a track roller for a sliding door. Um, you've got a concave surface on the wheel. It's a brass wheel uh, and really firm roller bearing inside. Um, so I'm trying to figure out a way um, that I can, say, mount a couple of these, mount a couple of these here on this. Uh, clamping plate and have a guide that these roll on so that these move backwards and forwards quite smoothly and it holds those up so uh, that's the next part of the project to to work on so um, what I'll probably do I think is I'll um, give that some thought and uh, see what uh, scraps I've got my scrap in that I can get that done with and um, start work on that and then I'll bring you back once I've made a little bit of progress. <clears throat> Alright, so I made a decision on uh, how I'm going to run these clamps. Um, I ended up cutting these down to 500mm uh, 
in length. The uh, clamps uh, pretty much covers the table anyway. Um, I mentioned before I was going to run uh, these uh, door track rollers, which would have been nice and given me a smooth run. Um, but contrary to my typical style, I thought I'll keep it simple. So what I've decided to do, I've got this uh, square box section that I'm going to cut down and run in between the two sides here. And then on the clamp plates, um, I've just got some heavy gauge uh, angle. I'll bring it closer to show you. Some uh, heavy gauge angle that I've just uh, drilled holes in here and countersunk for screws and then threaded into the actual plate. Um, I'll probably also put another one on the bottom. Um, so basically what's going to happen, these will run in between these two here, um, down further of course, and then these will sit just on here like that and uh, we'll just slide that with the boards. I think that'll be fine. The only uh, downside to this, it does limit me to doing moulds no longer than uh, 500mm, but um, I really don't think that's going to be an issue. I think anything bigger than that, um, I don't know that I'd have the capacity to do it anyway. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave it there for today and um, I'll bring you back once I've probably got these slides mounted in place and I've got these done. Um, and then we'll work on uh, how we're going to move them in and out. Like I said, I'm going to have um, probably just a length of threaded rod on one side to move it in manually. On the other side, I'm going to have um, a pneumatic cylinder on that side, but I've only just ordered that off eBay. It's coming from China, so I might not get that for two or three weeks. So we'll see how we go with that. So we'll leave it there. Cheers and thanks for watching. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, all the comments that I've had so far and the interest in the project, look, I really appreciate. Let me bring me up here for the sincere moment. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say I do really appreciate everyone's feedback and comments. I've had some really kind words, and uh, so I just want to say thank you to those people who've been watching and who've subscribed um, and who've made some, some really valuable comments. So I do appreciate that, and uh, I just uh, hope you enjoy uh, what I'm putting on up there for you. Um, all right, have a good day.